minus, minus e to the minus x. So that one would solve y prime prime minus y equal to 0. Not a bad guess. Cosine. Differentiate cosine two times. What do you got? Differentiate it once, you get minus sine. Differentiate that again, you get minus cosine. We have a winner. Cosine works. Also sine. So in fact, you can easily verify that y equals to a cosine of t plus some phase angle. That's a nice solution. You can multiply it by any constant you like and start it wherever you want. As a piece of intuition, if we have a second order differential equation, which is a differential equation which involves the second derivative non-trivially, if you just have one of those, you're probably going to need to have two constants in your solution. Because solving a second order differential equation essentially boils down to doing two integrations, and each integration gets you a constant. Um, but, but yeah, that, that's in fact the solution that we'll derive later. Um, and you could just as well write sine here, but cosine will do. Um, and then if that's, if that's the, um, and maybe we, instead of using a, I'm going to say that's r, because it's the radius, yeah? All right. Um, and then what's x equal to? How do you find x now? Now we found y, right? How do you find x? Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's right here. Just differentiate, and that gives us x. So x is minus r sine of t plus the phase angle. And so there you have it. That parameterizes a what? That parameterizes a circle centered at the origin with radius r. And the tangent vector, field, tangent vector field to this curve will line up with the given vector field f. What if we just want to find the equation of the integral curve? How would we do that? We could look at dy dx equal to what? Remember, generically speaking, I said it was what, q over p? Is that right? Yeah, q over p. So this was actually, I mean, I did it for this example, but this is a general comment as it relates to this problem. So what is q, what's p here? This is x over minus y. Now, we don't need any kind of fancy schmancy uh, second order differential equations mumbo jumbo. Um, we can just solve this thing by separation of variables, right? Separate, integrate. Separating gives me minus y dy equals to x dx. So integrate both sides, what do we got? minus one-half y squared equals to one-half x squared plus um, r squared over two. I mean, obviously, that's how you should um, write the constant in this problem, right? Oh, did I say plus? I meant minus r squared over two. Yeah. There we go. So that, that implies that x squared plus y squared equals to r squared. Writing the constant as I did right here, that was just me messing around, all right? You could say plus k and then solve it. You'd be led to the conclusion that k has to be positive or negative depending on where you put it because you've got a sum of squares, which is not negative. So. What's the advantage, what's the disadvantage of the method under the brown line here? Can you compare and contrast these, these calculations? And why, why would we prefer one to the other or vice versa? I mean, what's, the, what's different, what's the same? I mean, they both give us integral curves, right? 
What's above the line gives us a parameterization of the integral curve, right? And it will actually have a orientation, right? A directionality. According to the direction of increasing time, it will line up with the vector field. On the other hand, down here, there's no orientation, right? We just get a level set. Could be clockwise, could be counterclockwise, but this much we know, it will line up with the vector field. Uh, so sometimes I think the textbook might call this the phase plane equation. At times this is called the, this, this whole sort of general um, uh, what's the word? Technique, um, bag of tricks. Sometimes this is called the phase plane equation, but I'll get more into that later. Um, anyway, I think I hope that, you know, if I was to put on the quiz, here's a vector field, find its integral curve, you know what I'm asking now, right? So hopefully we've accomplished that today. My goal for the next meeting is to describe to you what is a conservative vector field and what that has to do in part with what are called exact differential equations. There's actually already a place where we can see that here. This we had minus y dy equals to x dx. If you look at that, we could rewrite that as x dx plus y dy is equal to zero, right? And so if you have a differential form, what's a differential form? A differential form is functions times dx plus functions times dy, right? That's a differential form. Um, if you can write the differential form as the total differential of some level function, it's said to be an exact form. This is an exact form. And in fact, this we could rewrite as the differential of what? Of 1 half x squared plus 1 half y squared, right? So if you can rewrite your differential equation as a total differential, you can immediately read the solution. The solution is just a level function equal to a constant. In this case, 1 half x squared plus 1 half y squared equals to a constant. That's a rather different thought process than separating and integrating, isn't it? Right. So that idea I just used is your first, perhaps your first um, exposure to the idea of exact equations. So that ties into the bigger question of when is a vector field conservative? Do you guys remember what it means for a vector field to be conservative? Yeah, well, that's fine. We'll talk about it Thursday. In the time remaining, I want to show you a couple pictures. By the way, I don't really have any dedicated homework for this material at the moment. So if I were you, and if you have time, I would just start working on the first order differential equations like separation of variables, integrating factor, exact equations. If you try to work some integrating factor before I cover it in class, when I cover it in class, it'll make a lot more sense. But you can wait. I mean, it's, you know, there's no super big hurry. It's just if you got time, it's always smart to work ahead. Come on. Yeah, it's cool. It's, I just wanted to, otherwise I'll end up with like, you know, half of the, oh. All right. I sh showed you guys this guy, this. Um, does anyone mind that I just showed their student ID number on the video? Does it matter? Because I can edit it out if it's needed. What's that? I'll, I'll try to edit that out. I regret my life. <sighs> All right, how do I get back to that without curses? <laughs> so there are 
I mean, you could use Mathematica, um, of course. But I, I like this one. Here's a picture of, um, I guess it's not quite the vector field that I put up here. I have y minus x, which is minus that one, I think, right? Yeah. But you can see that, you know, there's a picture of the vector field. Um, and this is a three-dimensional, so we can do better, of course. But um, and, th and there's actually a picture of the circle. You can see how it lines up. Um, we could have more fun, I suppose. We could do something like, here's the, uh, what would this be? This would be the spherically, whoa. Uh, let's do it more justice here. There. Yeah. Um, so there's the spherically out. I mean, so I don't try to draw this on the board, right? I mean, if you were to draw integral uh, vector integral curves to this, they would just be lines from the origin, right? This is the three-dimensional version of my first example. Whee! Yay! All right, sorry, I'll stop. Um, this website's pretty fun. It does a lot of stuff, but I, I, I digress. Um, this is actually more um, especially useful. I'll probably assign homeworks using this one, guys. So this is called pplane. It's it's a MATLAB package. You guys have MATLAB, right? And it'll actually plot what it's doing. Whoa. Um, so I think you can see those points. That you, you see those kind of uh, annoying special points where there's not a unique integral curve, right? There's certain points where the thing I did today doesn't quite give a unique answer, does it? Um, but how this works is the differential equation, like dx dt equals to that, dy dt equals to that. It plots the direction field, right? And then it finds the curves that line up with those, in other words, the integral curves. So you can visualize it even if you can't find it. Like we could easily visualize the one we just solved. Um, right? circles. So I, every, every so often I'll give you some, I might give you a homework problem on some quiz somewhere that asks you to use pplane. This is what I'm talking about. And when I say use pplane, I mean you load it up, you take a screenshot of your work and answer the question that I asked or something, right? It's not a big deal. I'm not looking for you to code MATLAB and properly comment it or something silly like that. Um, this is also useful, GeoGebra. Um, this right here is a slope field. What's the difference between a slope field and a direction field? Slope field is sort of the natural companion to like point two over there. There's no time, right? We just have like little line, little dashes that indicate the slope, but not the direction of the curves. So a slope field is the analog of a direction field for something like that. And, and there's, you know, this is linked on my webpage if you want to play with this thing too. But um, anyway, that's all I got for you today. I'll see you guys when? Thursday. All right. I'm excited about this semester. It's going to be a good semester. Everyone in here should pass.